Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to another card of the day with myself, the Mystic Witch. Today I'm going to be using our moon cards um, just because I'm in um, a really, really good mood today. I'm always in a good mood. What am I? Who am I kidding? I'm always in a good mood. Um, I did all my Christmas food shopping today, so I've got my turkey in, all the trimmings. I'm a happy bunny, well organised this year. That's what I love. So uh, it's been a busy, busy shopping day. Um, and then we had um, an Avira delivery. So super excited. If you've not seen my um, previous Avira video, check it out because there is some boss skincare that I have just demoed um, and I have to say I absolutely um, love, love, love the skincare um, that Avira has just brought out which is the vitamin C. Because you all know I'm all about natural. If it's not natural, I don't want to know. So let's see what today's um, card of the day is going to be. I hope everyone else has had a positive, happy day like I have. Um, and I'm sure the rest of my days are going to be happy too because uh, I'm well organised and on track for you, uh, which is our pagan uh, Christmas. So, yeah, let me just give this a shuffle. And if you're watching me live, say hi, it will have live up there. If you're watching me on the replay, it won't have live up there, but hashtag replay, let me know where you're watching from. Um, and whether you're watching me here on Facebook or whether you're watching me on um, YouTube. Come and say hi, and if you're watching me on YouTube, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any other um, of my Card of the Day Live videos. We wouldn't want that. Hi, Ashling, how are you? Hi, Cherish. So I'm just shuffling the cards for today's Card of the Day. Um, also, a little reminder, we're only two days away. Till Sunday um, and Sunday evening from 9 o'clock till 11 you will catch me right here on the Mystic Witch where you can come along and ask me to pick a card for you I will be more than happy to um, pick a card for you um, on Sunday which is our weekly um, draw a card for everyone so everyone um, that joins me live from 9 till 11 p.m. on Sunday um, who wishes a card will get a card oh thank goodness you're okay as well I hope you've had a good day I've had a busy day but um, productive day really productive um, did all my Christmas food shopping because with all this government talk about possible lockdowns at Christmas, you know what's going to happen. Guaranteed, people are going to go and bulk buy and panic buy and then everybody's going to run out of turkey in the trimmings. So this girl got in there quick. Um, it's just a crazy world we live in. Absolutely crazy. Um, and it's pretty scary um, what's going on with the vaccines and um, all the government claptrap that's going around. Um, but however, um, you know, uh, one day the world will wake up and uh, we'll be in a better place. Um, hopefully. Hopefully that day's not too far away. So let us shuffle this these cards and see where we are going with them i love these moon cards their messages are on point 
and usually pretty accurate as well. Exactly, we have to work our way through. You know, it 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 just so sad when you know we've we've had a summer where we've seen less masks, we've seen people happier, we've seen people um, kind of um, feeling somewhat a little bit closer to normal, whatever that is. Um, and then, of course, we head into the winter and, um, yeah, whew, they kind of um, throw the bloopers at us come uh, this time of the year. But, you know, um, the ordinary flu has been going around for years, right? So many people um, have died year after year with just a normal flu, right? Um, and yet, nobody batted an eyelid, right? It was just accepted that, um, you know, winter was flu season, right? Um, and nobody batted an eyelid. And then they bring another variant of flu, which is the um, C, um, and everyone is like panicking and um, whatever. And I'm like, well, treat it as the flu, pretty much. Um, you know, build up your immune system. Eat healthy. Make sure you're getting all those vitamins. Um, and... It's just common sense, really, isn't it? It's, it's a lot of common sense. It's like, you know, build your immune system. I remember when I was a little girl, um, I was at my grand's, and she um, stayed in a four-in-a-block tenement or, or kind of flats. Um, and, uh, you know, it would come lunchtime, and she would make what we called a jam piece or a jam butty. Um, so she would make the, 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 the jam sandwiches and then she would wrap them in um, little sort of like the, the bread packets that she used to collect simply for throwing out the windy or tossing out the windy. Um, and she'd wrap our sandwiches up and she'd open the window and shout, lunchtime! And rather than going down all the way the stairs and giving us our lunch or asking us to come up, she just shut the sandwiches out. You know, and we would, you know, and if you're lucky, they stayed in the packet. And if you weren't, they hit the deck, right? And we used to say, oh, it's got dirt on it. You know, and my gran always used to say, a little bit of dirt don't do you any harm. If anything, it's going to build your immune system. Wise words from an old woman. But do you know what? We're so busy sanitizing this, sanitizing that, killing bugs here, killing bugs there, or whatever else. So how on earth is our immune system supposed to get built up if we're killing everything in sight, right? And then, you know, something's going to slip through the net at some point, right? So, you, you know, because we're killing everything, we're not building up the immune system. And if we're not building up the immune system and we get a, a bug or a virus coming our way, yeah, that bug and virus is going to hit us like a ton of bricks, right? Whereas when we were kids, we were never ill, you know, we would eat, we would eat a sandwich with a little bit of dirt on it, you know, just added to the flavour a bit, but in all seriousness, you know, um, I suppose um, what we went through as kids um, with our grandparents and stuff like that, and I might be showing my age, but what, when, what we went through as kids with our grandparents or whatever else, you know, the health authorities nowadays would probably shun, shun us for that, you know, and um, would have all the, the um, social services on us for, for giving kids a sandwich. How dare you give a sandwich with a little bit of dirt on there? But yeah, it is. It, it, it's a true story, you know. Um, you know, when you fall in your skin, your knee, you would go up and you your gran or your mum would wipe it down or whatever else and she'd be out with a TCP, it stung like hell, but two seconds later you were out playing again. Uh, it's just, you know, we, we've kind of gone away from all of that now, haven't we? And it's, it's, hi Claire, we've kind of gone away from all of that now and it's kind of like scary. It's like, oh, my goodness me. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I do. You know, I build up my immune system. 
Because if I build up my immune system, there ain't nothing going to um, penetrate it. You know, it's like building up your barriers. If you build up your barriers, right, um, you're going to be protected. Uh, and if you build up your barriers uh, with natural products, which I have always done since I was knee high to a grasshopper, um, then you're going to even double your chances, which I just think is great. Um, but maybe one day we can only live in hope that we just plough through it all, plough through the madness, take one day at a time uh, and hopefully get to the other side um, where we might get back to some kind of um, normality instead of crazy world that we live in. And of course today's card is work through your fears, an appropriate um, card it's a new moon in Scorpio, um, you know, and it's such a good card because we are in a, a, a world where we're, we're afraid to um, face our fears, right? We would much rather um, be led, told what to do, how to do it, when to do it, etc, etc, you know. Um, because we don't have to do thinking for ourselves. We don't have to come out of our comfort zone um, to face our fears. But sometimes in life, we hit situations where <clears throat> there's nobody to guide us, right? There's nobody to tell us which way we should go. And we kind of feel on our own with it. And we're like, well, I got two choices. I can stand my ground and face my fears and go forward um, and try and work this out or I can run a mile and then pretend it never happened. But running away from your fears isn't going to help you in the long run because somewhere down life's journey you're going to hit that same fear. And you're going to have that same dilemma. Do I stand my ground, come out my comfort zone and um, face my fears? Or do I just run um, until the next time? And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that facing your fears is easy. Let me tell you, it isn't. You know, when I left um, 30 years of abuse, a lot of people would have thought I would have been, it was the easiest thing in the world to do it wasn't you know I was going into unknown waters I was going into unknown territory you know I had been used to 30 years of being told what to do when to do it what to wear where to be where not to be who to speak to who not to speak to how much money I should spend you know where I should spend it and woe betide me if I spent more than what I was supposed to spend. And when, you, when, you're, when you're in that situation and suddenly you have a chance to flee that situation and go into some kind of normal world, it's not easy. It is the most scariest, petrifying thing I have ever done in my life. Not only that, to put, to put trust in another man after being abused for 30 years um, with um, my ex. But, you know, um, I knew just following my intuition, facing my fears, that if I didn't take the chance that was given and I didn't escape, the only other way... I would get out is in a wooden box. So hard as it was, I faced my fears. And um, it took me a few years to realise that I wasn't accountable to one person for my spends. I wasn't accountable for anyone. Um, I had a wonderful new partner, a wonderful new man who allowed me the time to heal, who allowed me the time to um, let him show me what true love was really about. True love wasn't about control. 
It wasn't about putting somebody in their place and telling them what they should do, when they should do it, and how high to jump, etc. True love was allowing that person to heal and then showing them there is a better way. Showing them that nobody controls us at the end of the day. And really, the only fear that we face is within ourselves. You know, and we will always have situations in life that are terrifying. You know, they say moving house is the most stressful um, thing you can ever do, and it is. It's change, and change is scary. You know, getting a new job, going through that application process, going through that interview process. You know, how many of us have gone for a job and we go into the interview? Are we cool as a cucumber when, we, when we're going in for that interview? Or are we literally shaking in our boots? And we come out and we're like, <sighs> right? And we need a stiff drink after that half the time, right? But we, we, we have to face our fears and go through that interview because if we don't, we don't get the job. If we don't, we don't um, succeed in what we really, really want um, to succeed in. So if this card resonates with you today, what is your fear? What one thing is holding you back? Right? What is it that that little voice inside you is telling you, you need to do this? Yes, it's scary, but you need to do this. You need to put those big girl pants on, or if you're a male, put those big boy pants on, and you just need to get your roll up your sleeves, get the job done, and then worry about the uh, emotions later, right? We'll always, every one of it, it doesn't matter who we are, every one of us will reach a situation in our lives that is terrifying to us, that we, we feel we're kind of stuck, we want to go forward, but we're just petrified. What if somebody doesn't like me? What if I fail? Well, what if you win? What if that person likes you? You know, you're not going to know unless you come out of your comfort zone and try. I've had so many people saying to me, you know, I have a, a lady on my Avira team, um, or one of our Avira teams, and she messaged me the other day and she said, I don't know how you do it. How do you do it? How do you go live and just chat away? You do it so naturally, without a care in the world. You know, you make it look so easy. Let me tell you, it ain't, right? It ain't easy coming on live. You know, um, whether it's the first time doing a live, whether it's your last time doing a live, tenth time, hundredth time, before I hit that live button, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to pick a card. Now, one time, I would more, you know, because coming from abuse, etc., and coming from um, my ex of 30 years who would say, what if you t um, picked a card from somebody and you got it wrong? What if that person didn't like your cards? Because what if you crap at it? This is all the things my ex used to say to me. And he always said it before I was going out the door to read for a client. So all the way to the client's house, I'd be sitting there, what if the card's wrong? What if? I would hear his voice in my head. What if the card's wrong? What if it's not spirit guiding me? What if? Um, I, I pick a card for somebody and I get that card so wrong. What are they going to think of me? What's going to happen to my reputation? What's going to happen to whatever? Right? And in the end, I stopped going out. I cancelled all my appointments. I cancelled all my readings. And I never read another card. 
Even when I was asked to read a card, I never read it. Because his voice kept ringing in my ear. What if you fail? What if? You know? Um, and we'll always have those people that put these thoughts, that put these doubts in our minds or in our heads. What if you fail? What if you, you, you can't do this? You know, um, I've had women come to me and say, I've tried your makeup because I needed to cheer me up. And I looked in the mirror and I felt wonderful for the first time in my life. And then my husband come in and said, what the hell have you got on your face? You look ridiculous. And she said, the first thing I did was wash it all off. And I went from up here to down here. And I said, why did you wash it off? Because I looked ridiculous. And I said, in whose opinion did you look ridiculous? When you looked at yourself in the mirror, with your skin done, with your hair, your makeup and your lashes on or whatever, and you took a look in the mirror, what was your first thought? What was your first feeling? And she would turn around and say to me, I felt absolutely amazing. That's the thing, I felt amazing. For the first time in my life, I looked back and there was this beautiful face looking back at me. But then obviously I wasn't that amazing because, I said, yeah, because somebody else's opinion. I said, but let's rewind that a bit. Is it you that looked ridiculous even though you're cheering yourself up? Or is it your husband's insecurity that all of a sudden his wife is taking care of herself for once in her life and is putting herself first and foremost and making herself feel good for her? Maybe he's afraid he's going to lose you. And she said, I never thought of that. I just thought, he's my partner, he's my husband, he's my best friend. He knows best. Of course he doesn't know best. If you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you love what you see, you've nailed it. And people can criticise us from now till the cows come home. But they are not us. You know, we have to do things for us. Love starts right here with me, with you. If you don't put you first and you don't say, I'm a priority, I'm high maintenance. My health, my skin, my body matters. My happiness matters. If you can't do that for yourself, then you're going to allow the rest of the world to tell you what you can wear, what you can do, what you can't do. You know, um, I've tried lots of different outfits on, um, I've tried lots of new skincare etc I'm always buying makeup now with my new partner etc I'm saying new we've been together seven and a half years and they've been the best seven and a half years of my life but um I'm not hearing that voice saying what if you fail what if people think you're ridiculous with your makeup on or oh you got makeup on today who are you seeing behind my back? There's those insecurities, right? I've had that for 30 years, right? I've had a man, oh, you're dressed up. Who are you going to see? Oh, I'm going out with the girls. Yeah, right. The girls and who else, right? Whose insecurities is that? Is that yours or his? Of course it's his, right? Because he's not used to you doing self-care. Right? And doing self-care and putting you first when you haven't been able to do that is the scariest thing that you'll ever, ever, ever do. 
but at the same time, it's the most rewarding thing that you'll ever, ever, ever do. Because when you come out of that comfort zone, when you tell yourself, you look in the mirror and you think, I don't really care what other people think. I look good. My hair feels good. All right, I've maybe got the odd wrinkle or two, but hey, I've got the best skincare in the world to deal with that, right? Oh, I've got a few pounds to um, lose, don't we all, right? We've gone through two years of, almost two years of lockdowns, etc. What else is there to eat, do but eat food, right? So we're going to put on a few pounds. It's not the end of the world, right? We just get back into it. We start eating healthy. We start looking after ourselves. Boom, we lose the weight again. What have we got to worry, right? We make things much more complicated than they really have to be. So I love this card when it says work through your fears. And... If that means putting you first, self-love, self-care, first and foremost, then do it. And other people's opinions don't matter because I've learned through bitter experience that the ones that criticize, they don't matter. They don't belong in your, your tribe. If they don't love you or like you, for who you are and what you want to do in your life. They don't belong in your life. Wish them well. Cheerio. Bye, Felicia. Because the right people will love the real you. And I've learned that through bitter experience. I've had more people walk out of my life because I face my fears every day. I come on and I speak my truth. And I know, you know, out of every hundred people, maybe two people will follow, but that's okay because I'm not for everyone. You know, um, some people don't want my truth. Some people want their own truth. We're all different. We're all unique in this world. But if we can face our fears and we can realize we're all different, then we can all coexist, right? And what a better world that would be, rather than, you know, um, judging other people. Does it matter whether Jeannie down the road's um, new dress isn't what we would wear, right? Does it matter that, you know, um, I could walk down the street with, you know, when I first, um, I'll tell you a true story. <laughs> when I first um, left my ex and I was able to be myself, the first thing I bought was a witch's cloak and a witch's hat. And um, my wonderful partner uh, house is in a beautiful village with a large forest. And I said, you know what I want to do? I want to be me. I want to put my cloak on, my long black dress, and just walk the woods. And he says, well, do that. So we took some off trails through the woods, the, our local woods. And one of the off trails meant that we had to go on to um, a busy um, road. And there was no pavement on either side. So we were literally just kind of staying as close to the walls and um, the verge, grass verge, as we could um, so that the whizzing traffic didn't um, bother us. And we thought, we're going to have to get off this road because it's going to go around the steep, steep um, winding road. And it's a blind corner, you know, and we'd be sitting duck. So as we were walking, we think, right, the first entrance back into the woods, that's what we're going to take. So we go almost to the blind corner, and as chance would have it, there was an opening. And my partner went through the opening, um, which led to the um, a, an, another off path that took us out of the woods. 
And as he turned in, closely followed by me, with a waving black cloak behind me and my little hood up to stop the midges. Here in Scotland, we've got, you know, in the summer, we're, we're covered in midges. So um, the cloak hood was very, very handy for keeping the midges away from my face. Um, so I put on my, you know, there I was, my long black dress and my cloak um, to protect me from the midges. And as I was disappearing through the gap in the wall, a car um, had come round the corner and I couldn't help but have a giggle. And I thought, well, I could you imagine the conversation with the driver and his passenger when he comes round the corner to see this black silhouette, which is cloak, and dress disappearing off the road into beyond. You know, uh, you could just imagine the conversation eh, if, he, if it was the husband going home to his wife. You never guess what I saw today, dear. Well, as I was going down the corner, there was this witch, black cloak and all, just disappeared right in front of me. <laughs> it made us giggle. But you know what? That was the best day of my life because I was free to be me. It didn't matter. I didn't care. We passed by so many people when we were walking in the woods. And, you know, they, they just smiled and went, oh, wow, hello, how are you, sort of thing. Don't get me wrong. Some people gave me dirty looks or funny looks and say, mm, she's a bit weird, you know. But the main thing was I got out my comfort zone and I wore my cloak and I felt great walking through the woods. And I even had a giggle along the way as to um, what the conversation uh, amongst the, the, the car driver and his possible passengers were to be when he saw this floaty black cloak <laughs> just flapping by into the beyond behind the wall and never to be seen again. Um, I'm sure they still talk about it today. If I can remember it, they can, they're still talking about it. But um, this card basically says that, work through your fears. And the best advice I can give you here and now is be yourself. Doesn't matter if you're different from everyone else. Doesn't matter if you don't fit in with others because you're being yourself. You weren't meant to fit in with others then. If others don't fit in with you, they weren't meant to be in your tribe. So just keep shining your colours, keep doing what you love, want to do in life. Life is too short to not do what you want to do in life. Face your fears. You know, every day when I come on live, I no longer have that what if voice in my head. What if I read this card and it doesn't mean anything to anyone? What if people don't like my readings? Well, do you know what? Facebook's full of readers, right? Um, I may not be for everyone. But as long as I trust my cards, which I do implicitly, as long as I trust my spirit guides, which I always have done, and as long as I don't listen to others' opinions about whether um, I pick a card and it's going to be the right card or not, I'll continue to come out of my comfort zone and I'll continue to be me. Because being me is the thing that I can do right. And, you know, and we will always not fit into everyone's life. But the people that do fit around us, they're the right people. The people that stay in this group. Why do you stay in the group? Because you want to be here. It feels safe. It feels right. But just as, just as much as the people that are staying in the group stay because it feels right for them. You know, there are times this group has gone up to 100, 200 members and then went right down to 40. And then it builds up to 200 or 300 again. And then it goes down to 60. But that's okay. Right? Because I'm not for everyone. 
and I get that. I'm not for everyone. Does that stop me from being me? No. Does that stop me from coming on and doing the card of the day? No, because maybe one day when I'm sitting here picking a card, somebody else's world might be crumbling before them and I'm the only voice of reason that they will hear that's going to pull them out. I've had so many messages from people saying, do you know what, I actually um, had a lady once that um, had actually messaged me. I can't remember the card um, or what the card's meaning was, but whatever the card was, um, she was having a pretty tough time. And she was ready for Jack and life in. Nobody understood her, nobody got her, nobody really cared, nobody listened to her problems. And she was ready for Jack and it in. But somehow, some way, she found herself onto my card of the day. And she sat and in silence. She didn't even say hello. She just sat in silence and watched. Um, I didn't even know she was there because um, unless people say hello I don't know you're there and um, it was later on that evening I got a message from her and it was a huge thank you you may not know it Lady Moonlight but you saved my life because today I was ready to give up today I was ready for calling it quits because nobody cared nobody wanted to know nobody listened and then I found your group and I sat and listened to the card and suddenly I realised somebody did care somebody took the time um, to bring me to your group somebody led the way to your group and I'm so glad that um, they did because without you I wouldn't be here today and it's little things like that that help me get out my comfort zone and help me to do what I do every day. Yes, it's always scary when I hit that five button. Yes, I can shuffle my cards with confidence, but yet sometimes I dread the cards coming out. What if the card comes out? What if I misinterpret it? What if? But I've learned to you know, ignore the negatives, what if, and turn it into what if that card helps just one person today, what if. So never be afraid um, to face your fears and come out your comfort zone. Yes, it's scary. Yes, it can be tough. But let me tell you, when you do, and when you just come back to being you, that's when the magic happens. That's when everything changes. So I hope this card has brought um, meaning to everyone that comes across this card today. And it's okay if it doesn't, because the card wasn't meant for you then. But I always believe when I shuffle my cards, I always set the intent. Please help me choose a card that is going to have meaning for someone who is going to be watching my live reading this evening. And I set that intention every single time I do my readings. And when it, become, when it comes to doing my weekly pick a card, I do the same thing. Whoever asks me for a card, universe, I ask you to help me to pick the right card and to give the right message. I trust you implicitly to give me the right card, the right message to the right person. And to date, they have never let me down yet. Why? Because I put my trust in me. I put my trust in my guides the universe and I put my trust in the fact that if I believe and trust in my cards that's all that matters 
and my card might not be for everyone but there might just be someone in my small audience or in my small group that that one card could change their life forever and to me that's huge and yes there's times I've thought I'm not going to do this anymore I'm not going to do my card of the day I've said that so many times and yet here I am day after day facing my fears because you just never know you know I went offline for about two weeks one time I just thought I needed a break I just needed to put my cards away go within myself do some inner meditation etc and then come back afresh well let me tell you after that two week period the amount of people that said oh my gosh you're back where the heck have you been we have missed you I went on night after night looking for Lady Midnight's card of the day and nowhere to be seen so even though um, you may feel that nobody's watching nobody listens nobody cares trust me somebody's always listening somebody's always watching and somebody always cares so um, thank you for everyone who's joined me today um, thank you for uh, Ashling and to Claire um, and to anyone else that is watching this on the replay if you're watching it on the replay it won't have live up there um, hashtag replay let me know where you're watching from um, and if you're watching me on my YouTube channel because the Mystic Witch is also on YouTube then go along to the Mystic Witch hit that subscribe button and then all these videos are saved on there as well so you can re-watch them as many times as um, you wish um, I'm going to be adding new content on there um, over the next few weeks especially after Christmas when everything's kind of kind of got down to some sort of normality and not everybody's not running about like headless chicks um, looking for turkeys and fighting in the chopping aisles um, but I'm going to be doing some um, guided meditations in there as well so do go along to the Mystic Witch on YouTube um, and hit that subscribe button and you'll never miss any of my content um, thank you all for watching love you all have a wonderful wonderful rest of um, Friday evening start of the weekend so um, I will be back here tomorrow evening for another card of the day and I will also be back tomorrow with um, some um, Avila stuff and, and things as well so wonderful seeing new faces coming on um, and love and bright blessings to each and every one of you have a great night everyone bye for now